Good afternoon, everyone. I saw this incredible lemon blueberry sourdough loaf recipe done by that was on a YouTube short, Instagram reel, whatever you want to call it. And I'm gonna make my own because it looked really delicious and my sourdough is beautiful and ripe. So as always, it's gonna be super vegan. Uh, obviously there will be gluten, but there will definitely be delicious flavor. So let's get to this recipe. So this lovely recipe, once again, will be made completely in the KitchenAid. You can definitely do this by hand. I use the KitchenAid for sourdough recipes all the time, but the best sourdough is actually made just with a bowl and your two hands. We want to start with ripe sourdough starter and add 80 grams. Make sure to measure this out with a scale because the more accurate you are, the better the recipe. And add a third cup of Truvia or Stevia. I like the granule form and two tablespoons of olive oil. This will help jumpstart your starter. Add 500 grams of bread flour because sourdough and bread flour are a match made in heaven. 150 grams worth of whole wheat flour, lemon zest, lemon juice, and water. And combine with your hands or in a KitchenAid. Oh yeah and 75 grams of non-dairy milk. This is totally optional if you want a little bit more of a concentrated dough, but you can just opt for water instead. I popped all of my ingredients into the KitchenAid and with the bread handle attachment, I combined everything until it started to slap off the side of the bowl of the KitchenAid. Then I let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before I added my add-ins, which are basically salt and blueberries covered in flour. I added 15 grams of iodized salt. You can add up to 20. I add this after because I don't want it to disrupt my sourdough starter. And 1.5 cups of frozen blueberries tossed in flour. I like using frozen because if you toss the blueberries in flour, they will stick better and they just kind of are easier because I always have frozen blueberries in the freezer. I use the pincer method to combine the blueberries and make them evenly distributed into my bread dough. If you haven't heard of the pincer method, it's basically taking your index finger and thumb and compressing everything and basically just kind of squeezing all of the ingredients together. I did do two series of stretch and folds every 45 minutes, which is really simple. And you basically just take the outside edges of the dough, stretch it upwards and then towards the middle. I let my dough rest overnight in the refrigerator. You don't have to, but it just makes your life a whole lot easier. I let it relax in sort of a ceramic baking tray. You can let it chill in the bowl, whatever you prefer. I extended my dough out to a medium-sized rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I rolled it out into a bowl by taking all of the outer edges and stretching them towards the middle so it creates a circular shape and tension on the outside edge of your dough, which is what you want in order to shape your sourdough. Lastly, I rolled it towards the center to create even more tension on the outside section of the bread. And until it is nice and taut, you want to leave it because if you continue to roll it towards the center, the outer layer will break and you don't want to do that because you worked so hard to create that tension in your bread in the first place. I covered it with just a little bit of all-purpose flour and in a heavily floured proofing basket with some cornmeal ideally, I plopped my dough back in there and you can let it chill in the fridge overnight. The morning you're going to bake your bread, let it chill in the sunshine for about four to six hours before baking. So the oven's been proving my Dutch oven for about 45 minutes. I saw this awesome hack to put an ice cube on the side of your parchment paper up on the side of your bread in the Dutch oven. So we're gonna do that method. So yeah, I'm in the middle of my workout still filming my YouTube video, but we love it. Okay, time for the next steps. 
As I mentioned, I let my Dutch oven preheat in the oven at 425 Fahrenheit. And while it preheated for about 45 minutes, I took the saran wrap or cling film off of my lovely bowl that's been resting and I added some flour or cornmeal to some parchment paper. I gently took off the, the proving baskets linen or material, whatever sort of felt you want to use, and I scored my bread very simply down the middle and then with a couple additional scores on the left hand side. I took my Dutch oven out of the oven, it should be boiling hot. I plopped my bread in with the parchment paper and I added two ice cubes behind the parchment paper which is a trick I saw Nara use and I loved it. And you then bake for 30 minutes with the lid on. This ensures the most beautiful rise inside of your Dutch oven because that ice will melt and create steam and it's perfect for rising your sourdough and activating it even more than usual within a dutch oven so it's amazing after those 30 minutes i like to then take my sourdough bread out and then bake it uncovered for 20 to 25 minutes until golden brown you want to make sure that the bottom does not overheat because it will burn your bread but you do want to ensure that the top part of your bread is a really nice toasted caramel color so that it ensures a really thorough bake and also crispy bread that's nice and crunchy on the outside and really soft and delicious on the inside as always, I unglamorously took my bread out of my Dutch oven and struggled to put it on the wire rack. The parchment paper should easily slip out from underneath and you will have a perfectly baked bread. Let it cool completely and dig in. I like to let my bread hang out at room temperature for about three days and then I cut it up and freeze it and enjoy at any time. If you guys like this recipe, be sure to sign up and subscribe to the channel because I post recipes every single Friday. Let me know what you think about this specific recipe and stay tuned for daily shorts coming to you. I wish you all the best, happy healthy, and see you next week.